I want to give you a warm welcome from the Board of Governors of Tyndale, the Chancellor, Dr. John Wilkinson, the faculty of Tyndale University, and in particular, the faculty of Tyndale Seminary, as well as the staff and the other students. I want to welcome you to this virtual graduation ceremony, and we're glad that you could join us. This is a unique celebration today, and it reflects a number of firsts. This is the first class of Tyndale Seminary that will graduate under our new provincially legislated name of Tyndale University. This is the first graduating class that will celebrate graduation virtually. And this is the first class of graduates that may actually have two graduation celebrations. Today, we're celebrating a virtual graduation, and then sometime we hope in the fall, perhaps in November, we hope to have a live graduation where friends, where family, and fellow graduates can actually see each other and celebrate together. You, however, are not the first graduating class to have faced a situation in which society and the world is being shaped in a new way. Over our 125 years, our students, staff, and faculty have faced two world wars, incredible social change, and even pandemics. For instance, the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 had a devastating effect around the world. And here in the city of Toronto, it had a particular impact. But here's what the school's yearbook said about that time. They wrote this. The work of the college was interrupted to some extent during the epidemic of the Spanish influenza. The evening classes were closed for three weeks. The day classes were not discontinued, but all the students who were in a position to give assistance in any way to the sick and to the afflicted were released from attendance. A large number of young women went out to serve as nurses and several of the young men also were able to render valuable help. We're thankful, they wrote, to record the fact that among all of these students thus brought into close contact with the epidemic, not one of the case turned out that they contained or contacted the illness. It seems to me that this has always been the mission for us as a Christian educational institution, to fling its graduates out into the world in the midst of that world's groaning lostness and need. To see ourselves as culture makers, salt and light as we witness to the work of Christ in our lives. It's the kind of initiative that sends graduates from this class into a counseling and treatment center, to church planting and church renewal, to businesses in which their faith is a driver into excellence and entrepreneurship. Some will serve overseas, not just in traditional roles of mission, but in international development and continued leadership. God has always been about doing new things. In the midst of the pandemic and the questions of these times, God has given us a word in Isaiah 43. Listen to what God says to his people at that time. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you away. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. None of you are prepared for the new normal that will emerge out of this time of social isolation and pandemic. None of us were, but you have been equipped. 
By being part of Tyndale Seminary, you have been taught to think theologically, not to simply have a theology. You have been formed in your character so that whatever you do, your faithfulness will allow you to have hope in the midst of what may seem hopeless. All of you graduates have been given the tools to dream that things can be better. And all of you, women or men, know that the full potential of your faith is to lead into the future in whatever task you have been given. So, I want to welcome you to Tyndale Seminary's virtual graduation ceremony of 2020. May God bless you. Thank you, President Nelson. Congratulations, graduates. As Dean of the Seminary, I want to welcome you, grads of 2020. I'm honored to be part of your virtual celebration. Whether you feel it or not, the transcripts now testify that you are a master of theology or a master of divinity, or some of you are even a doctor of ministry. It's been a lot of hard work. Congratulations. This has also been a journey for your families, for your church friends, and maybe even some in your workplaces. They have sacrificed with you and for you along the way. Everyone celebrating. You have heard a call from God and you have been able to complete what you have started. There's something analogous, at least for me, in the structure of Matthew's gospel. The first disciples are called in chapter 4. They are instructed by Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, and they witness the power and the authority of Jesus, whom even the winds and the sea obey. And after this teaching and mentoring, there's a kind of graduation. Jesus says at the end of chapter 9, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So at the beginning of chapter 10, he summons his 12 disciples. He gives them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness with the instruction to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. I think it's fair to say that Tyndale's since Tyndale's beginnings, our supporting congregations and families have prayed to the Lord of the Harvest for just such laborers. And now in 2020, in you, the Lord of the Harvest, I think, is answering some of those prayers. You have worked hard to train and qualify yourselves as laborers for, your, for his harvest. You have studied the scriptures. You have studied the lives of faithful workers in Christian history. You have worked at spiritual formation and counseling, and you've reflected theologically on hard issues of faith and ethics. And now you are being encouraged to look up from your books and behold, the fruit of the new creation is breaking forth. The sick are being healed. The dead are being raised. Demons are being driven out. You are being sent to join in God's mission and to proclaim and embody the message that the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, while graduating into a pandemic was wholly unpredictable, unpredict this is indeed the context that God has planned for us to be reliable pointers of the kingdom. Now, Dr. Gary Nelson has already mentioned the Spanish flu outbreak in Toronto in October 1918. It was our 25th, anniversary, or 25th academic year, and According to the newspapers, all live theaters, moving picture shows, pool halls, and public gathering places were ordered closed. Churches, even, and Sunday schools were closed, too. Now, some pastors found it wholly unnecessary and unchristian to deny people the opportunity to seek spiritual solace. But the Toronto Medical Officer of Health, let's call him a marketplace minister, responded that people didn't need to visit a church building to be closer to God. And then we hear that many of our own students went out to care for the sick and the afflicted, according to the graduating address by President John McNichol. Who would guess that that would be their harvest? I worked on Niagara Farms many summers in my youth. Harvesting in real life is never without sweat and some discernment and risk. It can mean climbing a precariously high tree, determined to get that last apple or cherry or peach. It might mean going on your hands and knees in a rain-soaked 
muddy field to pick berries. Where will the Lord of the harvest send you? It will certainly challenge your hard-won academic capacities. Jesus tells his followers, there are good trees and there are bad trees, distinguishable by their fruit. And where you proclaim the gospel of reconciliation and peace, where you encourage others to discover and pick the fruits of the Spirit, there you may very well encounter resistance from those who still gather profit from peddling rotten fruit. So as you go, take the words of Jesus, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. But don't worry, you are, quote, of immeasurable value to the Father. And when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. Your Tyndale experience has hopefully clarified your call, developed your gifts, gifts rooted you in the gospel, and given you some confidence and joy for the harvest. Dear graduates, your basic training in, for such a ministry of reconciliation is now complete. God's harvest has begun. It's harvest time. Go and proclaim the good news of the kingdom. And now to our valedictorian, Tabitha Mu. It's a bit surreal to be delivering a valedictorian speech in the latest fashion trend. A nice blazer paired with a pair of pajama bottoms. But as unnatural as that may be, I think it's safe to say that none of us who are graduating had expected we'd be finishing our final semester in one of the most unprecedented events of our lifetime. We had thought we'd have the time to say a proper goodbye to the friends who have supported us along the way, to thank the professors who have encouraged us to think bigger, and to simply have time to reflect on our seminary journey and finish well. But instead, we were thrown into a new reality, many of us hosting multiple online meetings to stay connected with those who we pastor, others juggling between doing our own assignments and helping our kids do theirs. We were waiting in line, not just for our own groceries, but for those who are elderly and in need. We cooked meals for those who are at the front line. And perhaps there are those among us who are also at the front line right now, serving those who are in our community. And as we found ourselves in this new environment, I'm sure some of us were thinking, if we only had the peace and quiet to finish our assignments, while others wished we were at the seminary lounge or at the large tables at the back of the library, just to know that we didn't finish this race alone. But regardless of how you finish this last leg of your race, I hope you're proud of everything that you've accomplished because you have finished well. And you inspire me because it's not just about what we've learned through our academic studies, more importantly, that we've taken what we've learned and live it out each and every single day in love for God and for others that's truly making a lasting impact. So class of 2020, will you join me in thanking those who are next to you right now or sending a text to someone who have helped you cross the finish line? this journey would have been much more difficult without their support. Congratulations, class of 2020. And I look forward to celebrating with you in person, where I may or may not be wearing pajama bottoms again. Until then, God bless and take care.
My name is Steve Holmes, and I have the privilege of serving as the chair of the board of Tyndale University. And today, I have the privilege of, on behalf of that board, congratulating you on completing your education here at Tyndale. Or maybe it's just the start of your educational journey at Tyndale. You know, it's an interesting time for us all, as we know, and I'm sure other speakers have spoken about it, but the reason it is for me is that graduation is my favorite event of the entire calendar year. Right about this time at the seminary graduation, typically at Richmond Hill Community Church, I would be standing, spending the entire service before I get my opportunity to share, and I'd be watching. And what I'd be watching is I would be watching husbands and wives and families and children and and grandchildren and grandparents and friends celebrate the completion of your educational journey. You know, we start typically in a graduation ceremony with, with somebody giving instructions that say, as the courtesy to all graduates, we would ask you to refrain from applauding until the completion of the category. And inevitably, there will be some family that says, no way, no how because they want to express the joy that they feel on seeing their loved one accomplish such a significant thing, completing their educational degree. And I am take huge pleasure of writing down the families who are first to breach. And today is so different because I am speaking to a camera. And so I trust that in the midst of your families, wherever they may be and wherever you may be, that today is a day of real celebration. Thank you for spending your years here at Tyndale. Thank you for completing a degree in a unique way and being open to that outcome. We have so much to be thankful for, and I wanna take this opportunity to be thankful for those people who have navigated change in the midst of all this, our students, our staff, and our faculty. I have often been said to say, the pace of change is faster than the pace of learning. I've also gone on to say recently that change is occurring so quickly that we don't even get to adopt to one change when another one has been implemented. And that is certainly the case today. And so you as a graduate are graduating in a time of uncertainty, a time of constant change. But what I want you to realize, and for which I hope you take great comfort, is that the, the root of that statement, the pace of change is faster than the pace of learning. The root of that, the foundation of that, is a foundation of learning. You see, we can navigate change if we've got a foundation on which both we've learned and two is rested on Christ. And so as you journey forward, and as you look at the uncertainty ahead, wondering what God might have you do, listening to his voice, I want to say, may God be with you. May, may his face shine upon you and give you peace and rest and be gracious unto you. I am sorry that this is not a way in which the Tyndale community has always celebrated graduation. But somehow I hope in the future we can bring you together as graduates and as alumni to truly celebrate with you. This is also a little bit of a sad graduation for me in the sense that my mother was looking forward to this service. My mother's 93 years of age and she loves graduation. But this one was gonna be special. And so I will call out the individual. Congratulations, Jennifer Guest. My mother was very much looking forward to seeing you graduate. I hope you have a great day. I hope that you celebrate with your family. And I hope that you can hear God's voice as you search for what your future might be. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you everyone for joining our celebration today. Celebration is a very important part of the Christian faith and finding ways to set down markers and rejoice together as community is an act of hope, whether we do it in person or virtually as we're doing today. It is my privilege to offer a prayer of dedication for you, Tyndale's graduates. 
So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, all good things come from you. Celebration, hope for the journey ahead, the promise of your faithfulness and the gift of new life. All these things you have given freely in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as Jesus taught us to pray, we begin with worship and thanks for the kingdom of God. Thank you that our study, our work, our service at Tyndale is part of the kingdom of God that is coming and has come. Thank you that it is part of our story that you meet our daily needs. You were present, Lord Jesus, when assignments were due, when there were difficulties or misunderstandings. You have forgiven us for things we broke and got wrong, and you have brought many of us into places of new understanding and maturity as we worked for these degrees. We pray for these Tyndale graduates, Lord Jesus, that they will dedicate the next steps in their journey to you. You once prayed that the world would see your love and your glory through your followers. A degree, a qualification earned, are so much more than passports to effective careers, although we do pray for effectiveness. We pray that every degree earned at Tyndale will be a blessing to our graduates and through them to the world. That teaching, service and scholarship will be woven together with faithfulness in each graduate story and in Tyndale's story as part of the big gospel story that brings hope to the world. We are meeting like this virtually because the world groans and hurts. Part of our love and service at this time lies in living within new limitations. I pray that the skills and knowledge that these graduates take with them from Tyndale will equip them for all that lies ahead in these days. Please give us all peace about the future, freedom from worry, a humble spirit to forgive, and a joyful hope. To close this prayer of dedication, I'm going to read words of blessing from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. We are looking forward to seeing graduates, guests and the faculty and staff at Tyndale at our graduation ceremony in November. Until then, stay safe and well and stay in touch.